Hey guys, Willie Mayette from No Bowl Piano, and welcome to this Practice with Willie segment. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about enclosures. And enclosures are those kind of bebop figures that give you this kind of sound. Those half uh, whole and chromatic enclosures, and we're going to talk about that. So practice with Willie, this is a little bit more raw. You can see I don't have my No Bowl t-shirt or Jazz Edge t-shirt on. Just like, just really chill, and I'm not going to be editing this video, so you might hear some ums and ahs. Uh, and forgive me, I am going to talk, right? But I'm going to guide you through some of this practicing that I think will help you. Uh, it's great, uh, especially on a rainy day like it is here today. Uh, so I just did a search on my Jazz Edge website for enclosures. You can see I got all this stuff. So I went and I can go to my chord approaches, enclosures, and guide tones lesson. And I get this, um, you know, uh, this music talking about all of these different enclosures. So whole above, double chromatic from below, double chromatic from above, uh, you know, and all of that. So let's talk about what that means and what these enclosures are all about. So when we have, when we improvise, it's helpful to think about target notes. So if we're, I'm just going from a D minor seven to a G seven chord, and I'm just gonna play a very simple chord voicings down here. It's just a D minor seven block chord to a G seven block chord. If you want, you could also do chord shells as well, root seven to a root three, completely up to you. All right, so anyway, I got my basic chords down here. I'm not gonna change that. So now I think about, all right, well, what note do I wanna start on for the D? Well, maybe I'll start on either a tension or a chord tone. Maybe I'll start on my ninth, you know? And then where am I gonna go to? All right, well, I'm gonna try and hit the root, okay? I'm gonna try and hit the root when I get to the G chord. So I know I'm gonna start here on the D, and then when I get to, to the G chord, I'm going to end on the G. All right, so now let's take a look at this in some sheet music here. Um, I'm going to just write out simple shells for right now. I think that this would be a little bit easier. All right. And okay, so we have our D minor. And I'm just going to start here with, uh, whoops, sorry. I'm going to start, whoop, <laughs> start on the ninth. And I'm going to come down to the, the root right here. And we'll leave that as a chord note. All right, so now the question is, and we'll just put our chord symbols in here real quick. D minor seven to a G7, and if, in case you're wondering, I'm using Sibelius, and this is actually Sibelius 6 on a Mac, uh, kind of an older version, but I like it, and it works. Um, so anyway, I got my D minor 7 to G7, and one thing you'll notice here is like, well, what do you got? You got a bunch of space in here now, don't you? So the question is, how do I fill in that space with the notes? And the, what most students are always asking is like, what scale do I use to improvise? And that's not a bad question to ask, but in reality, uh, it's not just about the scale, right? The scales are fine, but it's how you shape the line. Um, I, I guess the best analogy I can give you is that it's not the words that you say sometimes, it's how you say the words, right? So just a, 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 a very quick example, you know, you look great in that sweater. That's a lot different than like, wow, you look great in that sweater. Those two sentences, even though it's pretty much the same words, have very different meanings. Same thing when it comes to improvisation. So we could just do scales. Right? But the problem is it sounds kind of boring and it has no shape to it. So typically starting with chord tones is better. Right, because you can kind of get uh, some more shape out of your lines and it's a little bit easier. We'll be utilizing some chord tones and also some enclosures. So, the enclosures. What is an enclosure? So if my target is G, there are different ways that I can get to that G. And when I say get to it, I mean that right in here, I'm gonna be playing something that is going to resolve to the G. So the G is the target. Now I'm going to get to that target. How do I get to it? I can go whole step below, whole step above, half below, half above, double chromatic from below, double chromatic from above. All of that information is all in that lesson over at Jazz Edge, right? Just chord approaches, enclosures, and guide tones. Just do a search for enclosures and you can get all of that. All right, I'm not gonna go into deep detail on that because I've already done that in that lesson. So 
every enclosure is going to add a different amount of time to your improvisation. Now, obviously, we could do quarter notes, we could do eighth notes, we could do sixteenth notes, we could do triplets, you know, whatever. For right now, for our purposes, we're just going to do eighth notes. It'll be a little bit easier to get started with that. Um, so, let's say I'm going to choose this, all right? So, I have a double chromatic here. So, this means that I'm going to change this for right now into this, and then, whoops, sorry, let's fix that, make that an eighth note. Okay, so now this is what I have for my improvisation. So, one, two, three, two, three. Okay. Okay, and if I put on my backing track, which, oh, you know what? The one thing I forgot to mention to you guys, I'm sorry, is that all of this will be available um, uh, for my Jazz Edge, Piano and Willie, and No Bowl Piano members. So if you want any information, just go back to nobowlpiano.com uh, and then you can get some uh, membership information if you're interested in that. And also, while I'm pausing for a second, do me a favor and please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. That way you can get more of this stuff. All right, so anyway, I got this. Let me put on my backing track here. All right, and let's, let's start from the beginning. And I'm using iReal Pro for my backing track. Right? Okay, so now I still have quite a bit of space in there, right? So if I want to fill this line out a little bit, well, what is it that I can do? Well, right, so I could start. I can start to do like chord tones, right? And the beauty of writing this out is that you can see, all right, I got three beats here that I can work with. So now I don't have to do all eighth notes. What if I did? All right, so I go down to the root and now I have, let's say eighth notes from this point, two more eighth notes. And I can do that. And then all I'm doing is I'm picking two chord tones, C and then F, the seventh and the third. So now I have uh, what do I got here? All right, so that's cool. I like that line. Now the beauty is that I can then take this and I can just repeat this. All right, I'll repeat this over here and now I can change this the next time around. So now I'll still start on the E but this time, let me try and do all eighth notes. I'm going to change this all the eighth notes. What can I do? I'm going from the E, and I'm trying to get down to the G. So again, I could think, all right, I have that double chromatic enclosure. This time I want to change it. I want to do a double chromatic from above and a double chromatic from below. So that means I'm going to have four eighth notes. Three and four and one. So then I'll go right over here. Three. And four and okay. So then I have uh, right now I got okay, that works. But now let's fill this in with all eighth notes. So I'm going from an E down to an A, down to an A. So if I want to do four eighth notes, I could, right, I could do that. I can just fill right in scalar wise. So I'm just using my scale right there. Okay. Now I get this. Now, once I find a line, a phrase, a lick, right, that I like, I can then transpose that into all 12 keys if I want, or even just a few keys. That's always a question I get from students. They like, should I transpose into all 12 keys? Well, I would say, hey, look, if you're in your 20s and you're like gonna go to music college and you wanna play gigs professionally, uh, and, and then music is gonna be your life and your career, then yeah, transpose into all 12 keys. 
Uh, if you're 70 years old and you're playing for fun at home and you just want to learn some songs and learn a little bit of improvisation, then transposing into all 12 keys. If you got the time and you want to take the time, then great, do it. It's certainly not going to hurt. But if you just like kind of want to get into it and you don't want to spend hours and hours a day practicing, then you don't have to transpose into all 12 keys. So every situation is going to be different and you need to just decide for yourself how much time do you want to put into this. All right, so now I have... So my first line is... Two, three, four. All right, so the exercise that you can try is just try moving between D minor and G, pick a target note. So maybe I start on the seventh, and I'm gonna go down to the third. So, so you see how I did this? See that double chromatic? So pick two target notes. The first target note is gonna be the note that you're starting on, okay? So I guess I should say pick a starting note and then a target note. So I'm going to go from C here down to the third of G. Once you have that, then pick what your approach is that you're going to practice. So I'm going to do that double chromatic from below, okay? And now I know that on beat four, I have to get this, four and, right? Because I know that I'm going to play those, that double chromatic as eighth notes. So then I could put this practice track on, okay, and you'll have access to this as well. You can download it for your iReal Pro uh, install as well. And then I can just try playing along with this. That, I messed that one up, right? Let me try it again. All right, good. That didn't work so well. Let me start with this. Yeah, I like that. You get that one again. Good. Now once I get that, what am I going to do? I'm going to write this darn thing down, okay? Because then that way I don't forget it. Whoops. And then I got my... There we go. All right, so now I got it all written down. So once I have this, then I can go back and I can analyze this. What, what's going on here? This is the seventh of the chord. This is the fifth of the chord. This is the third of the chord. Back to the, back to the uh, fifth. And then I go up to the uh, root here, then the seventh, and then this double chromatic, going to the third. So it's all chord tones. I'm just outlining that D minor seven chord there. This is why it's so important to know your chords. If you don't know your chords, then it's gonna be very, very difficult for you to be able to improvise. If you need help with your chords, definitely check out my Piano Essentials program. Uh, that would definitely help you be able to learn all of those seven chords and all of your major and minor scales, all right? So anyway. So one fun thing to do is just put on your play along track and then you could just loop this indefinitely. Just keep going on and on and on. I get this repeating 30 times here. And then I just play along with it and I keep going from this starting note down here. And now I can start to figure out all different ways in which I could create lines to go from that note down to the G. From there down to the G. Now you might say, hey, wait a second, Willie. What about, you know, the G in here and all of that space? Yeah, sure, you can start to fill that in as well. And one idea is, like, on the G, you could start to use notes from that altered scale, right, which is kind of a cool sound. Right, that's kind of a cool sound right there, that altered scale. So you could play around with that. Or what you could do is just simply pause there. Because really all you're trying to do is you're trying to get from that starting note to the target note. 
And that's what I would suggest that you start with, especially if you're kind of new to jazz improvisation. Now, if you've been improvising in jazz a little bit more, now you can extend that progression. It's not just D to G, go D to G to C. Then go D to G to C to A, right? Like uh, to A7, then try D, G, C, and then you could do like E flat seven, D minor, G, C, A, D, G, C, E flat, D, G, C. You could do like the sub fives, the tritones, and all that. But again, I don't want to get uh, too advanced for you. If that's a little too advanced, don't worry about that. But if you're at that stage of the game, just take a look on the site for tritones, altered scale, it's a bunch of lessons on all of that stuff. Um, so anyway, again, I'm just going to put my play along on. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go back and forth. That's terrible. Let's try it again. <laughs> what am I trying to do here? Yeah, that one works. I don't like that one. So now, all right, so I'll take that and I'll say, all right, I'm trying to get... But the problem is I, I, I get there too soon, so... I could do that, or what about this? Ah, see what I did there? That's my target. I did the half step above, then the double chromatic from below. That's the beauty of your enclosures, is that now you could start to work different ways of getting to that target note. That's a cool sound of line. Slower. Right, so now, what do I do? I take that, I write it down. Now, hey, Willie, why do I write down all of these licks? You write them down so you don't forget them. <laughs> all right? All right? Uh, well, it's already eight notes. All right, perfect. Okay? So now I have four different licks here that I can practice. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from one into the next, into the next, into the next, along with the play along track. All right, I'm going to move this out of the way so I can see, and let's do each of them. Nice. All right, so I got four solid licks there that I can use to move between D minor 7 and G7. Now again, what can I do? I could transpose these, I can move them into other keys. But you see how I'm taking the idea of starting with a note, moving to a target note, and then utilizing my enclosures to be able to create these lines. Then I take the play along track, I play over that play along track over and over, and I try in real time to see if I can come up with other enclosures. Because that's the key of improvisation, right? You have to be able to do it in real time. So um, the best way of doing that is trying to practice that in real time. I got some written licks over there, or over there, right? I got some written licks that I, I can work off of, but then I can start to kind of change it on the fly. So anyway, I hope that this has been useful for you. If you like this, please leave a comment below. What else would you like to hear me uh, work on and kind of break down in this Practice with Willie session? All right, uh, be sure to like the video. Be sure, please, to subscribe to the channel as well. I appreciate that. And like I said, if you're interested in uh, more information on my memberships, uh, just go back to nobowlpiano.com and you can uh, get some information on the memberships right there and get access to all of the lessons in the site. All right, that's it. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you soon.